hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna be giving you part 11 of what if naruto became the god of lightning remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto had cosmic energy over on anime making 3 and enjoy that and i also posted a new series on this channel so go ahead and check it out what if naruto was a blue eye uchiha elite so go ahead and check out that and enjoy and i post a new series over anime making 2 as well guys what if naruto had the rarest bloodline so go ahead and check out that and enjoy as well and remember if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime making anime making 2 and anime making 3 go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you for all for helping and support and yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode start the intro So the last time we left off, soccer name was called Wikaru, as she made her way down there after her teammates told her that she could do this. It was finally time for her to prove herself. As the battle began, the both of them started to clash. Kuru quickly showed that her nature was fire, she started to spew out fire techniques after fire techniques. Despite not being as strong, soccer was able to keep up with her and even caused her damage by throwing a cone at an explosive tag on it. As Sakura knew that her body was breaking down but she didn't want to give up as her teammates were just so much more stronger than her she needed to show them that she was pulling her own weight in the group so with that they kept on clashing as Karu told her to give up but Sakura did not as she kept on clashing with the girl violently until her body broke down when the girl fired off a fire jutsu it was going to incinerate her but she was safe by Naruto and Sasuke as Sasuke was the one that was holding her as he asked her if she was okay the reason why he was being so kind, as Naruto had told him that she was the one that stayed by his side in the forest and made sure that he was okay, as he saw that she was trying her best to get stronger. As she felt weak, but the both of them told her that she did her best and that she was getting stronger, as she passed out with a smile on her face. As the rest of the matches went by, as Naruto went down there to face off against Rock Lee. Lee was pumped as he was ready. As the both of them started the battle, the fight was rather vicious, the both of them clashing with their fists. As Naruto decided to have a little bit of courtesy and not use any of his main abilities on Lee, trying to test him out in Taijutsu, but he soon came to realize that Lee was a beast in Taijutsu. As Naruto literally called the lightning from the heavens, as he pulled it down towards his body, threatening him. As lightning cackled around him, Lee went into gates as both of them fight. Like it was no tomorrow destroying the arena. The entire building was shaking as Naruto made the building top split as lightning crashed down. As the both of them end up slamming their fists together. The one to get to back after that was Naruto, even though he was on shaky feet. As Lee dropped down with a smile on his face completely out. As Naruto stood there with a smile until he passed out as well. Within a time skip, as Naruto woke up in the hospital, as he saw some way there she told him that many of his friends came by to see him but he was unconscious she figured she would stay for a while until he wake up after all she was leaving as she was leaving for the month period no one got to see her fight because of the odd numbers but she went to the final same way as she told him that he'd be facing off against that gar guy as she was going to be facing off against neji and sasuke is going to be facing off against amoy she gave naruto a kiss on the cheek for good luck and with that she headed off with naruto still holding on to his cheek so yeah guys, it was basically what I left off, you guys can switch across to the place and check it out for yourself. So do you begin this new episode? We begin this new episode at Kumo. In front of the Raikage was Amoy, Karu, and Samui. Behind them was Yujito. Behind their team, he looked at them as they just finished giving the report. Well, I'm proud of you three, he said. 
not only did all of you make it towards the exam, but Samui, you did not show off your skills. So in the finals, when all of the dictators are there, you can show them what you're made of. You are not to go easy on that Ayuga. You are to show them that Kumo is still one of the top villages. Neither of you should go easy on your opponents. Trust me, right, Kagesama. They will do their best. Alright, the three of you are dismissed. Yujito, you stay behind. The three of them nod as they left. Yujito waited until they left as Raikage spoke. About the boy. Do you know if he is in control of the tail beast within him? I am not sure. But if he is, he doesn't rely on the power that much. Because he did not quite use it within the exam. But I am certain that he is the one with the tail beast inside of him. But he just rely on his skills mostly. For a genin, he's quite powerful. How would you rank him against your best student? As Yujito knew that he was talking about Samui, she was the strongest out of the other two. I haven't seen what he's fully capable of yet, but I'm sure if Samui go all out without him using the TB's power, she can handle him. The Raikage smiled at that. Then it would be perfect for her to make it to the finals to face off against him. The Raikage said to himself. Despite not really liking Konoha that much, he always gave people props when they were powerful, when they work and train for their power after all, that was his main thing. As a man was rather bulky, muscles upon muscles, as the weights were all over the Kage's room, where the man just did a couple workouts each and every day, even while going through papers. But he just wanted his shinobi to show that Kumo was still on top. For the other nations and the daimyos to see that Kumo was still as powerful as Kanoha. He then heard a ruckus outside as he saw many people going off. A frown came on his face. He had already worn B and he's still doing it. As the man burst through the window, Yujito shook her head. It was then that she heard a rapping. Rather a loud rapping like it was being magnified by at least 10 speakers. As she sighed, as she made her way to left the office, as she saw Darui outside. He's gonna need another window, said Yujito. Darui, just lower his head. Man. Meanwhile, at Konoha, as Naruto made his way towards the hot springs, Kakashi had wanted to take him to train him for the month period, but Sarutobi had denied that request, saying that he had someone else to train Naruto. As Naruto wondered who this was, they must be stronger than Kakashi if he had them... Well, special put aside for him. Naruto looked towards his hand as he's been working on his lightning edge, his new lightning jutsu, to get it stronger and also move more equipped with it. After all, Kakashi had been showing my thing or two and he would have wanted to go with Kakashi because Kakashi had been showing an example of the lightning blade to make him more proficient with his lightning edge. But he simply shrugged. Who was this guy anyway? And why did they want to meet at the hot springs? Making his way inside, there was no one outside so he went inside as he made his way towards the male section. As he went towards the changing room, he came out back with a towel wrapped around his waist as he saw the hot water. He then lowered himself and relaxed down into it. <sighs> he said as he could feel all of the tension, all of his muscles in his body being freed up as he leaned his head back on the stone, relaxing. He then heard something but he shrugged it off. No one else was in here. He had the place all to himself. Seems like people are rather busy doing all kind of things for the upcoming tuning exams. He then heard it again as he wondered what the hell was that. It sounds like laughter. As he heard it once again, he looked around, peering through the smoke as he saw someone over towards the wooden wall that separates the male and female section. As it was a white haired man, peeping through it looked like a hole. As he was giggling and writing something in a notebook. As Naruto got out of the water and wrapped his toddler on his waist. As he made his way. What do you think you're doing he said. The man froze in fear. Because usually. Girls always caught him while he was doing his perverted things. Yes they always caught him and attack him. But the voice. It was not feminine. It was a. He turned. He scoffed as he saw the small kid. Scram brat. Don't you see I'm busy. You mean busy peeping on these ladies, said Naruto. Shh, keep your voice down. Do you want to get me caught? Wait, I know you, said Naruto. The man then turned 
as he got up on his two feet showing his impressive size he was rather tall as he looked on Naruto oh do you he said well I'm quite famous you know after all I'm Jiraiya Naruto rushed off Jiraiya blinked blonde hair blue eyes those whisker marks he thought to himself a moment later Naruto came back as he had something in his arm Jiraiya eyes went wide as he started to cry living eye water as Naruto stopped why the hell are you crying it's always happy when I meet one of my loyal fans Jiraiya said are you a fan of my book well kind of said Naruto as he heard laughter in his head as he snarled a bit flashback as Naruto was rubbing his cheek it was after someone had kissed him you know kid you're gonna have to find out more about the opposite sex huh like what said Naruto well I can feel like you're feeling rather conflicted from the kiss your body is changing you know this is rather embarrassing said Naruto why be embarrassed? I mean, I am a nine-tailed fox that can transform into a human. That is already crazy, so let's not make it more crazy, okay? Alright, fine, said Naruto. Well, there must be some books or something for you to read up about these things. I suggest you go and get one. After all, this girl seemed rather interested in you. And if things escalate, well, I don't know. You're going to have to know certain things. Like... As the Kyuubi started to tell him on certain things, as Naruto's face turned bright red, as he was making vivid details of everything that he told him. Alright, that's enough, said Naruto. Time skip. As Naruto made his way to a bookstore, as he was worried that he would get caught and he would ask him why he was buying these things, he then saw a little orange book. Make out paradise. Hmm. That might help, he thought. It was about making out. And she had kissed him. He shrugged in the flashback. I kind of need it, said Naruto. As Jiraiya smiled. As he put a finger to his chest. It is always a feeling in here that just go boom, boom when I meet a loyal fan. So tell me, you enjoyed it, didn't you? Well, there's something I don't get, said Naruto. Huh? And what's that? The main character. You know we have the same name, said Naruto. Huh? Yeah, name is Naruto Uzumaki. What was your question, Jerry asked, roaming over that. Well, um, the main character, the time when he was a... Uh, Naruto face turned red. Well, he, when he was kissing a girl, and she stopped him, she told him that it was her time of the month, so they couldn't escalate anything. What does that mean? What do you think it means, said Jerry? Um, well, does it mean that there's a time of the month when you can't be with a girl? Jerry started to laugh. Well, yeah, he said. But, you see, ladies have this special time of the month. As he started to tell Naruto what exactly that mean. Wait, really? said Naruto. Hmm. As Jerry placed a hand on his shoulder, you're quite naive to these things. Well, you're just a kid. But how old are you? I'll be turning 13 in a couple of months. Well, I suppose I could give you the talk. I already know the talk, said Naruto. As his face turned red, someone explained rather vivid details. Laughter could be heard in his head once again. Well, I'll fill you in on the things that you don't really understand. You can just ask me. By the way, are you doing this because you met a lady friend? Wait, how did you know? Hmm. I've been through this myself before. Well, I saw people go through it as well. And they wanted information. So, it was easy to figure out. So, who is this special friend of yours? But she's not here at the moment. She's gone back home for tune exams. Ah, someone from out of town. That is much better. Why, said Naruto. Well, when you're here with another female, she wouldn't know. What? But why would I do that, said Naruto. If I'm with her, why would I be with another female? It seems like you're more modest than me, kid, said Jiraiya. As Naruto paused, he looked over at Jiraiya. Wait, it can't be. Are you my trainer? Naruto asks. Jerry is smirk. So you figure that out, huh? Well, given the fact that no one else is here, and you seem to take a rather good interest in me. Yeah, said Naruto. Well, that's right. 
Saint Seiya asks a personal favor from me to help train you. Wait, really? You? But you're a son. Yes, that's right, Jiraiya says he plays a hand in his dress. I am Jiraiya, the legendary Sonin from Mount Miyaboku, the Toad Sage, the ultimate super pervert. You're just wet, John. You know it's not really good to announce yourself as a super pervert, right? Jiraiya simply shush him off. So I'll be taking care of your training for the month so you can get stronger to handle your opponents. I heard that you're fighting a tough one. Yeah. I'm fighting this guy Gara. He is a J Naruto paused as he looked at Jiraiya. Come on, kid. Sensei is my teacher. Of course I know about the fox in your stomach. I heard that the both of you have a decent relationship. That he helps you. That he was the one that helped you get stronger. Yeah, said Naruto. As he looked on his hands. But I need to get more stronger. As he clenched his fists. Because what happened last time I won't let it repeat itself. He then looked up. You were his teammate, weren't you? What are you talking about? Orochimaru. He nearly killed me in the forest of death. Jury eyes widened for a quick second before they returned back to normal. I heard that you had a conflict with him. But he nearly killed you? Yeah. He left me for dead. But the cable was able to save me by flooding his chocolate through my system. To break the seal that Orochimaru placed on my stomach. A seal? Yeah, I don't really know what kind of seal it is. But it stopped me from accessing the power. And the fox break it to help you? Yeah, and he was pretty worn out after that. Jerry looked at him quizzically. Are the both of you that close in a relationship? For him to use so much of his power to help you? Yeah, he's a nice guy. He was the one that helped me train. Are you forgetting that? Well, I know about another Jinjulki. Called the perfect host at Kumo. Him and his tail beasts are completely tight. And it's like they share one body and mind. I heard that he has full control. But you don't have that. Nah. The seal that I have something is up with it. For some reason I can't access more than three tails. No matter what I do. It's like it's tighten or something. Jerry a smile. Well then kid. You should be happy to see me because I have the key. Wait. What? You have the key? You know that you're not ready for my full power. But he can loosen it a bit, said Grandma. Naruto nodded. Well, I can't access his full power yet. Seems like my body is not ready, but... If you can just loosen it a bit. Jerry smiled as he patted Naruto in the back. Come on, kid. We have a lot of work to do, he said. Time skip. Are you crazy? Come on, Jeratora. Just a tiny bit, said Jiraiya. As Naruto was still looking at Jiraiya. As he had just pulled a goddamn toad out of his mouth. That was, well, shocking. He has already controlled the first three manifestated tails. We just wanted to loosen just a single bit. So that he could work on controlling the others. Jeratora looked towards Naruto. Are you sure that you're ready for something like this, kid? Do you actually know what you have inside of you? Are you sure that you can control this power? Well... Not 100% said Naruto, being truthfully. But he's right, just a little bit, to see if I can control some more. Jiratora sighed, fine then. This is all on you, Jiraiya, he said. I'll take that responsibility, said Jiraiya. As the toad walked over, as he placed his hand on Naruto's stomach after he lifted up and turned his hand, Jiratora then moved back as Naruto slumped down to the ground. Control yourself, Naruto, said Jiraiya. A blue haze exploded from his body, forcing Jiraiya to jump back. The both of them were in a clearing, a training field that most people didn't went to. Train Grove 44, as the ominous feeling could be felt, electricity started to spark everywhere. Jiraiya stepped back as he heard a deadly growl. As Naruto's skin started to boil, Naruto, said Jiraiya, as he saw that Naruto's skin was literally tearing off. He was transforming. As three tails emerged, as the last one started to emerge, the blue glue getting more thick. The jury watched as his skin was torn off, as he growled, as he looked around his eyes, searching the place. As Jiraiya reached into his pouch, as he started to feel for his seal, Jiraiya looked at Jiraiya. Stop him! As Jiraiya paused, when he saw that Nur did not move, meanwhile, 
Calm down, kid. Because of my power being sealed away for so long, now that he's loosening it a bit, it come washing out on you. You need to focus and remember what you have been trained and fighting for. Do you want to be a mindless beast, unable to control yourself, or do you want to get more powerful to defeat your enemies and protect the one that you love? As Naruto picked himself up slowly, you're right. As he took in several deep breaths, the fox then released Chakra towards Naruto to heal his body, seeing that his skin had torn off as he was entering Teal Beast's second version form. Back outside, Jerry watched as Naruto's skin slowly started to recover, although it was rather pink. But a blue haze started to heal his skin rather easily. Jerry released his hand from his pouch as he smirked. As he looked towards Jeratora, you're lucky, so stop smirking. Things went well this time. Well, I had no doubt, said Jiraiya. As Jiratora simply shook his head. As Naruto picked up himself, as his body felt like it was teared apart a moment ago. On to recover, as he panted, he looked around a massive crater he stood in. Did I do this? Well, you kind of lost control there, Brad, said Jiraiya. But look, you are under control now. As Naruto looked at his hands, the cloak was around him. Three tails were dancing behind him. Usually, he felt bloodless and the rage to let himself get taken over, but now, his movements felt calm and smooth. He was under full control. As Naruto released a breath, the cloak then vanished back into him as he sat down. That was something else. It was amazing that you can control so much at your age. We'll just have to keep on working on it. But for now, why don't we begin with your training? As Naruto looked up, so what exactly are we gonna do? Jerry simply smirk. Time skip. As Naruto was fast asleep in the arms of the giant toad Gamabunta, he slowly let Naruto down to the ground. As he looked over at Jiraiya, the kid is something else, Jiraiya. He was able to stay on me for the entire day and a couple of minutes before finally passed note. Other than the fox chakra, he has some intense reserves. Even when he lost his ability to use most of his chakra, he gripped on tight. So I guess it's okay, said Yamabunta. As Jiraiya gave my thumbs up, he knew that Naruto was something else, something beyond special. Time skip. As Jiraiya was rubbing his cheek, as Naruto had a big smile on his face, I did it. He panted on the ground as he was lying down his hands spread eagle. I, I hate you, he said. You know, that's not really a big celebration, said Jiraiya. Well, given the fact that you're a Sanin, you're supposed to be one of the most powerful ninjas in the world. So the fact that I hit you and at least cause you a bit of pain, that means something to me, said Naruto. It's not like you actually beat me, you know? It doesn't matter, I hate you. I hate a Sanin. It's not like you let down your guard or anything. I asked you to break through your defense and hate you. Well, that technique that you were using that was cheating, you were not using only Taijutsu. What? My lightning is an enhance of my body. How can you call that cheating? It's cheating, Jerry says he folded his arms as he pouted. Come on, said Naruto. We still have two more weeks left of this. I need you to push me to my limits. I need to get as strong as possible before the time comes. There's no way I'll ever let what happen be a repeat. I don't want to feel that useless ever again. Jerry looked at him as he had a flashback. Minato was panting on the ground. I did it. I hate you. You know, it was just a punch. Well, considering that I break through your guard and hate you, that's a big celebration. After all, you're a very strong ninja, Jerry sama As Jerry simply smiled. Fine, you hate me, he said. Well, at least you have the proper respect. Minato got up and smiled. Come on, let's continue. Kid, you're exhausted. You need to rest. No. I need to get stronger, said Minato. End of flashback. Well then, Pervy Sage. Jerry eyebrow twitch. As Minato had called him, Jerry Sama. Or Sensei. But Naruto called him Pervy Sage. I told you to stop calling me that. Come on, it suits you well, said Naruto as he flipped and got to his feet. Now let's go. I'm not done yet. In Kumo, 
both Amoy and Kerr was on the ground, panting heavily. They had slight marks in their shirt, but it wasn't from a blade, it was from claws. From the way it seems like someone had ripped into them. Samui was still standing. A few bruised marks and cuts here and there, but she was still standing. Across from her was Yujito, with a playful smile on her face and a tiny scratch on her cheek that was currently healing up. Well, you guys have gotten forward today. I must say you're all improving, as she smiled. Samui, give it up. You're tired. There's no way you can keep this up. I'm not giving up until I fall. Now let's keep going. The other two looked up in amazement as Samui clashed with Yujito. Still not giving up even though her body was exhausted and her moves were a lot slower than before. But she still fought and fought and fought. There was something pushing her. A drive. As Yujito slipped under her guard and hit her in the stomach. She fell over her eyes, rolling back as she collapsed, unconscious. Yujito looked down. The girl had been through a lot. After all, she knew what she's been through. And she knew the reason why she fought so much. Her story was quite tragic. As she never wanted to be seen as weak again. Time skip. Kuro and I smile as she looked down towards Sakura. Her team, she had given them a day off. She knew what went to train for the finals. Yes, his family. As he was going to advance his abilities with his bugs. Kiba. Well, she had been helping Kiba and Hinata despite them not passing though. They still wanted to get stronger as a ninja. But today was their day off. At the moment she was helping Sakura. As she was quite surprised when the girl came to her. Asking for her assistance in Genjutsu. Being one of the main Genjutsu users of Konoha. She was always happy to help a young Kunoichi, especially someone like Sakura. The girl had great skills in Genjutsu. She had good control over her chakra and could easily manipulate it. But her chakra was limited, yes, it was rather low. So that was the main thing, helping her expand her reserves. She was also helping her how to enhance her abilities. Her speed, her punches, her kicks with her chakra. And the girl was coming along quite well. As she smiled, as Sakura was completely out. She had used up most of her chakra and in the past known from exhaustion. She already checked over her, she was fine, just exhausted. But the girl was quite determined. She was pushing herself. She wouldn't give up. And that made Kurenai smile to see a strong Kunoichi. Growing up in this day and age, yes, that made her very, very happy. As the finals were just around the corner, and she wanted to see all of the hopeful tunings, it was going to be rather exciting. Meanwhile, I think that's enough. No, said Sasuke as he pushed himself off the ground. I'm not done yet, he said. As he panted, he looked at Kakashi. He went through hand sign as he held out his hand. Lightning started cackling on his hand before it dissipated as he fell. He fell right on Kakashi's shoulder as Kakashi had stooped down and caught the boy on his shoulder. Before he hiked him up on his back and made his way, he's really pushing himself hard to be the strongest. As with that, they headed off. Time skip. As Naruto heard knocking on his door, he turned. Today was the finals for the tune exam. As he was getting himself ready, I'm coming, he says. He put on his gloves as he made his way towards the door, opening the door. He was greeted by samurai guards, all of them looking down at him sternly. Their eyes cold and calculated. Naruto can see that voice. As Naruto remembered that voice, suddenly someone broke through the samurai guards and leaped into his arms. As he caught her, she giggled as he spin her around and ruffled her hair. He then placed her down. Zena, what are you doing here? He said. As he looked at the small girl, she had brown hair along with black eyes. She was seven years old. She had a big smile on her face. This was the fire daimyo's daughter. Yes, his young little daughter is youngest. He had three daughters and one son. This one Naruto got along with the best, as she seemed to have taken some shine to him or something, seeing that they went on so much missions for the Fire Lord. Dad came to watch you in exams. I asked the Hokage where you were, and we were given this location. I missed you so much, she said, as she pouted a bit. Why haven't you come by anymore? 
Oh, sorry about that, Senorito. You see, I needed to train for a month to get ready for a tuning exams. Train? But why? You're already that strong. I mean, you're the strongest. So why would you have to train? I mean, anyone that will come to face you can go like, pa pow, pa pow. She pushed out her fist as she said that. And they will be done for. Not to mention your cool trick with the lightning. Naruto chuckled as he rubbed off his head. Oh, it's not that easy, he said. But don't worry, because once this is over, I'll come to visit you a lot of times, okay? You promise, she said. Yeah, I promise, said Naruto. As she bounced up and down his apartment, the head of the samurai group stepped forward. Miss Zana, we must be going now, he said. Zana pouted. Really? Keoshi asked. Yes, your father is waiting for you. But can't I just stay with Naruto Kun and he will bring me there? The man shook his head. As Naruto chuckled, it's alright, Zana. Don't worry, you'll see me at the tuning exams. Alright, she said. And I'll be cheering you on, okay? As Naruto smiled at that. Okay, he said. Keo looked towards Naruto as he was her personal guard. Despite most samurais being harsh, the man gave Naruto a small smile. After all, they went on a rather dangerous mission when they were attacked by a large group of bandits. And Naruto had just arrived at the samurai temple. He had to rush out as fast as possible and he came to their aid. Many of his good men died that day and he was going to die but this boy had saved him. I hope to see good things from you at the exam, Naruto Uzumaki. As Naruto nodded, I won't disappoint. Her father is hoping to see good things from you as well. As Naruto smiled at that, don't worry, won't disappoint you guys. You can't disappoint us, you're too awesome, said Zana. As Naruto smiled again, she hugged his leg one last time before she marched on as she waved goodbye. With that, she headed off. As Naruto walked over before getting his things, he then closed the apartment as he took in a fresh air. As he released, he jumped on top of the roof as he shot forward, making his way towards the exam area. The place was bubbling with excitement. People, the place was packed. The winged daimyo also attending with the fire daimyo. They had close ties, along with the daimyo of the land of lightning as well. As everyone was there, everyone bubbling with excitement, waiting for the exam to begin. Many bets were placed, and surprisingly, a lot of them were placed on route as well. After all, everyone heard about the kid that was able to manipulate lightning to a dangerous degree, to the point where even Daimyo took an interest in him. So everyone was here to see, everyone was here to watch and see what was going on. As the place was bubbling, people were on the edge of their seat, they were also here to see the last Uchiha and the prodigy of the Hayuga clan as well. Those were the main people that they came to see. As Naruto arrived, for once, Kakashi was on time along with Sasuke. Well, Sasuke was the cause of that. He didn't want to miss a single thing. After all, he didn't want to forfeit his match. He wanted to show what all of his training had pulled off into. That is why he was here early with Kakashi, ready to show what he was made of. Naruto walked over, you know. I thought that you would be late. What gives you that idea? Well, Kakashi is always late. I thought that you were above on you. And you will end up coming uh, cool, sunshine or something to surprise everyone. You know? That actually sounds like a good idea, said Sasuke. Well, too late now, said Naruto. As he glanced around, he didn't see some way or a team, as he wondered where they were. Looking for your girlfriend, Sasuke asked. Naruto turned towards him. What? I came by the hospital. Aw, uh, you are worried about me, said Naruto. Don't try to turn this on me. Me and Sakura came by the hospital, and we saw your little girlfriend there. You know, the one from Kumo. As Naruto simply turned his head, you're not gonna deny it. Deny what Naruto said. Sasuke seemed to turn back his head as Naruto started to laugh. You think you can pull one over on me? You will have to wake up a lot more earlier to do that, said Naruto. As he glanced around, it was then that he saw them, the three of them making their way towards the arena. As some way, looked rather neutral, but when her eyes landed on Naruto, a small smile spread over her face. As she looked at him with a small wink, and they made Naruto's cheeks got a bit red. As they came over, the group was lined up, all of them were there. I see you made it. Thought you were gonna coward out. After all, you're facing that Gara guy. After all, 
You look quite afraid than I told you. Oh, trust me, honey, said Naruto. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, I'm honey now, she said. <laughs> Let's try something, said Naruto. Well, dear, I like it, she said. As a moi. And Karu looked at her. She was really playful with this guy than anyone else. Huh. They must have a crush on each other, Amoy thought to himself. As he didn't bother to say that out loud. Pissing off Karu was one thing, but pissing off Samoy was something different entirely. Meanwhile, up in the Kage's boots, the Hokage was given the reins as he stood to his feet. The Kazakage on his left. Well, Orochimaru in disguise. The right Kage on his right. Each of them had their guards behind them. At the moment, Jerry was currently on the rooftop, looking down as the Hokage already had his guards. He was here to see Nurta fight. It was going to be quite a fight indeed. As he waited, the Hokage gave a speech that had everyone cheering, as they were already even more hyped than before as he sat down. Wonderful speech, Hokage Dano, said the Kazakage. Hmm, I've heard better, the Raikage said. Sir Toby laughed a bit. I'm sure you have, he said. I'm sure you have. As the Raikage looked down the smile. So I see all of them is ready. Why not get this show on the road? Well, it's about to begin right now. As he looked down, Genma was down there. Alright everyone. Let's not keep you waiting, shall we? A round of cheers went off. Alright. The first match of the exam will be Chikamaru Nara versus Tamari of the Sun. As everyone, kind of let's down a bit. After all, those two were not on the most popular list, but it was still a fight to well watch. The rest of you, please make your way towards the contestant box. As all of them start to walk away, leaving Tamari alone, that made them quite confused because Shikamaru was as near to pause. As Shikamaru had his hand on his head and was slowly crawling away. He was stooped down, making sure no one saw him. As Nurta started to laugh, Hey Shikamaru, he said rather loudly and placed a hand on his back. Where are you going? Shikamaru turned. Chub some blonde, he said. As Nurta started to walk off as the crowd separated, Shikamaru cursed as Tamar looked at him. What? Run away. Are you a man or not, she said. It's not that. Just don't want to fight a troublesome female. I'm troublesome now, am I? As Jinma shook his head, doesn't this guy know not to piss off girls? Yeah. Don't know why I get stuck with a female when most of the others got to fight a guy opponent, but except for Neji. Proctor, can we begin the match? Tamari asks. As Jinma turned his head, you really have some balls, you know that? Alright. Match 1 Shikamaru Nara vs Temar the Sand begin Temar leaped forward at a second thought Boom! Her fan smacked in the ground where he was But he was able to evade huh. I pissed her off he thought to himself Way to go Shikamaru he thought Meanwhile Your friend's gonna lose Said some way As Boltra and Naruto were standing at the railing Near to each other You know that right honey? She said and how do you know that, darling? Nurta asks. Well, that girl there is quite powerful. She might not be the smartest, well, in the bunch. I heard about the Naras, they're rather smart. But it's gonna take a lot more than intelligence to win this match. If he doesn't have the raw power and she ever unleash that fan on him at full force, I'm afraid he's done for. Shikamaru might surprise you, said Naruto. Well then, let us see, she said. The match lasted for two hours and Shikamaru evaded Tamari. Using explosive notes and using shadow to catch her but she was always dodging. Until he blew a hole in the ground. He was able to trick her and capture her in his shadow. As she couldn't believe it. Well, looks like this is over. As he started to raise his hand, making her raise her hand as well. I give up, he said. The crowd was silent as he couldn't believe it. What? said Tamari. I'm running out of chakra. There is no way I can keep this going. Because in 5-4, his shadow returned back to him. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not like I want to become true in any way. But it's just more responsibility. You're real lazy, aren't you? Said Tamari. Kind of, he said. Well, you're the winner, he said. I was bested. 
because you gave up when I would have lost anyway. As the crowd wasn't so excited, so there wasn't much sharing. Open the boots. Quite smart, but also lacking the effort to fight, said the Raikage. Well, that's an hour's for you. Yes, I know of them quite well, the Raikage said. Well, it seems like everyone has been waiting for this match, Kazakage said. Seeing everyone already on the edge of their seat. Sasuke Uchiha versus Amoy. As the Raikage smiled, sure what you're made of Amoy, he said. As it would be wonderful for the Uchiha to be defeated. For the last Uchiha to be defeated by a shinobi from Kumo. Yes, that would surely make them realize that Kumo was the strongest. As Amoy just had to pull off the win. Well, it wouldn't be that easy. He heard that Uchiha was rather strong. But Amoy was strong as well. Back up in the boot. Lose and I'll kill you. Well, that is quite reassuring, said Amoy as he looked towards Karu. Oh, it's not a reassurance. It's just a threat. Yeah, he said. As he made his way, he shook his head. Why did he have to fight the Uchiha of all people? The Uchiha. Why couldn't he get someone else? Probably that Nara who would have just given up and given the easy win. But no, he had to get the Uchiha. Someone who was quite popular being. The last one of his village that he was left remaining. If he managed to defeat Uchiha, that would have be a big boost for Kumo. Yes, a rather a large boost. But if he lost, he sighs. He glanced towards the Kage boot where right Kage was. Well, he guess he will have to do his best. That's by going all out. As Samui glanced over towards Naruto, she saw him turn towards the Uchiha. Sasuke, if you lose, you know that just mean I'm better than you, right? What? Sasuke said. Well, it's quite simple. If you lose, that means I'm better than you. And that means I'm the strongest. Sasuke's eyes started to twitch. You think you're better than me, he said. Yes, of course, said Naruto. So lose, and you will see that I'm really better than you. And everyone will know it because they will see that you can't even handle one ninja after all of your training. As Sasuke eyebrows started to twitch even more. As Naruto smiled, go get him, buddy, he said, as he tapped him on the shoulder. Sasuke made his way down in a huff, riling him up before he fights. You want to make sure that your teammate win. Well, he's already gonna win, said Naruto. You're underestimating Amoy too much, said Samui. Well then, let's just see about that. Sakura had a smile on her face as she watched. Sasuke made his way down there. As Ino looked over at her, Naruto is still better, she said. We're not competing. So I'm not gonna answer that question, said Sakura. As she turned her head back down. Hmm, Ino said, turn her head. Kekashi. His strength is like a representation of you. So let's see what you have done over the past month. Um, you say something, guy? Guy sweat drop. Curse you and your hip attitude, Kakashi. Meanwhile, are you ready? The both of them nodded. Alright, let us begin the second match of student exams. Omoi versus Sasuke. Begin! As he jumped away. Can you make this easy and just give up right now? I had I have to ask, said Amoy. Sasuke looked at him. So you think I'm weak as well, he said. What? What are you talking about, said Amoy. As Sasuke rushed forward, Amoy quickly went through hand signs. He slammed his hand on his wrist. Poof. A sword came into view. Sasuke smirked. He was lucky that he asked Kakashi for this. Poof. Sasuke released a seal. As a sword came to view, both of them clashed straight in sparks. Naruto was surprised he saw Sasuke using blades. As it made him feel first keep a blades on his back. When did Sasuke start to use blades? As Amoy jumped back. I never knew that he used blades as well. Never saw you at the preliminaries. Something I just picked up said Sasuke. And you think you can best me? Someone like me who has been using blades for a long time now. Sasuke shrugged as he shot forward. Clang! Your blades clashed against each other. Sparks flying. Everyone was at the edge of their seat to see the Uchiha react and twist as he attacked with a fury. The both of them clashing all over the arena until Sasuke slammed his blade into the earth and went through hand sign. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. He released several small fireballs. Amoy started to focus as his blade started to hum with chakra 
As he slashed through the fireballs, he felt the heat licking away at his skin. He flipped his blade in the air and went through hand signs. Winston, Gail Palmy says he fired out a blast of wind. Soft Gail leaped this as Amoy launched a kunai up in the air that clicked onto his sword. His sword was knocked right towards Sasuke. Sasuke twists as he grabbed onto the hilt before twisting back and launching towards Amoy. Amoy used a kunai as he blocked his own blade and flipped over and caught the handle before bringing it down and blocked Sasuke's swipe. The both of them then continued to clash inside the arena. Seems the both of them are quite even, said Kazutake as he looked down. Sir Toby simply smiled to himself. Sasuke has even unlocked his Sharingan yet. As the Raikage said nothing, as the both of them leaped back from each other back down the arena, Sasuke stabbed the blade in the ground. As fancy as this is, I prefer the hand to hand method. Amoy simply looked at him, Sir Uchiha, but I can't afford to waste time with you. Have to make quite the show, okay? So let's end this, shall we? Amoy then went through a long series of hand signs. As Sasuke leaped back, ready for anything, Amoy then slammed both hands on the ground as the ground started to shake. To nature? Everyone wondered. Fire style. Breaking steam. The ground cracked open as fire exploded from it in all directions. As the ground cracked as another large wave of fire spread out everywhere. Sasuke leaped and twist as the ground cracked behind him and he was in mid-air. As the fire engulfed him. Sakura eyes went wide as the fire steamed down to show a log. Akuna was tossed towards Amoy as he brought his blade up to block it. He did, only to feel something behind him as he twists. As he saw another Kuna at his feet, an explosive tag as he leaped back. Boom! Sasuke came barreling down from the wall, his fist extending. Amoy spin as he grabbed onto the wrist and twist Sasuke and launched him towards the ground. Sasuke smirk as he went through hand sign and breathed fire onto the ninja wire that he attached to Amoy. Amoy's eyes went wide. He quickly slashed it, but the fire was too close. He was blown out of the air as he was sent creaming down towards the earth. Before he could drop with impressive show of speed, Sasuke appeared and slammed that heel right into his face. But Amoy poof into a log. The real Amoy then burst him underground. As he twists his blade to the ear, Sasuke duck is Sharingan reflecting off the blade as Amoy twists around once again. He curses as both of their eyes lock. Amoy found himself in a strange place where there were spikes all around. He then realized he was falling towards his death. This was a Genjutsu. He had to break that. He started to flare his chakra. He quickly broke out of the Genjutsu but he was too late. A fist smashed into his face breaking his nose as he was lifted off his feet and slammed into the wall. His body slid down the wall from the impact as he was unable to get back up. As the crowd exploded in cheers when Genma announced Sasuke the winner, everyone celebrating as most of them had bet on the Uchiha and he won. Most of them had bet for him to win this entire thing but there was still certain objective in his ways like the Uzumaki and also the Hayuga. Well, the Hayuga will be fighting next, so you'll have to know if he is capable of beating the Uchiha. Sasuke made his way up as he wasn't too badly hurt. A few scratch here and there from the sword scratch, but nothing too bad. A medic still looked him over to make sure he was okay. They had a 10 minute recess. People to stretch their legs and do what they want and talk. As they fixed back the field, it was either Izu that or Jutsu. Up in the boot, that Uchiha is something, isn't he? Said the Raikage. Yes, indeed, he's powerful. Said the Kazikage with a smirk. Well, not that he could see because of the veil. The Raikage wasn't that pissed as he saw that Amoy tried his best. But Sasuke was just better. Well, it doesn't matter, he still had Samui. And she's gonna wipe the floor with the Hayuga. He can count on it because his style will not work against what she was trying to do. Well, they will see soon enough. Up in the boot. I guess you were right, darling, said Samui. He won. Well, dear, it looks like you're up next. I wish you all the luck, said Naruto. Really, dear? Do you want to wish me all luck? You know if I win, there's not a chance in hell 
Well, when are we? There's not a chance in hell that you'll pass this exam, right? As Nurta laughed, oh my god, he said, what's wrong? You've lost yourself in that delusional world again. She's smirk, have I? As Nurta simply laughed and she laughed as well. Meanwhile, Nietzsche was watching the encounter. His eyes were cold. They were wicked. He had to look like he wanted to kill. After all, Kumo was the one that killed his father. And Neji had to hold a grudge for the longest time. Ever since finding out that he will be facing off against her, he made himself a promise. He was going to kill her. Yes. He wasn't going to end the match until she was dead. Nothing but lethal strikes. Nothing but strikes to kill. He wasn't going to hold back at all. Not giving her a chance. He was just going to make sure that she was dead. To take down a ninja from Kumo as revenge for his father was the only thing that he wanted right now. And he was going to make sure that she's dead after this. And there will not be any fallout because this is the exam where you can kill. But guys, it'll be end episode right here. For this part, if you want to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications to post it. But I'm going to see you guys soon. Peace.